Good day and welcome to Product School. Today we're going to be chatting about what it takes to thrive as a PM on a platform team. A quick introduction. Uh, my name is Sham Narayan and I'm a group product manager on the OneDrive and SharePoint team at Microsoft. I lead a global team of product managers focused on the files and collaboration platform. I started my career off in technology consulting and where I got to work with customers on real business problems, got firsthand to see uh, how technology can be a true enabler. But I knew that my true calling, my true passion was product development. And about nine years ago, I took a leap of faith and dove headfirst into product development and product management, and it hasn't disappointed. I absolutely find it energizing to come up with new ideas, uh, ideating uh, the intensity of executing on them and taking them up to market and just rinsing and repeating that process over and over. I just find that experience extremely satisfying and rewarding. Uh, why platform PMs? Why this topic? One, platform PMs are super cool. But more on a serious note, uh, I had this question uh, asked, or this conversation comes up quite often about what does it take for someone to be really successful as a PM on a platform team or as a platform PM? Uh, this comes up in conversations with my team, uh, in, with folks I coach and mentor, uh, during interview loop, uh, and hiring events, I have candidates ask me this. And there's a lot of literature and explosion of content on the internet over the last few years on product management. Um, lots of good frameworks, uh, lots of good tips and tricks, but a lot of them kind of have a, a slant towards traditional product management or end user facing product. And this talk of the genesis of this talk is essentially distilling down insights from my personal experience as a platform PM. Uh, and then watching and observing and deconstructing uh, some very successful platform PMs, some I believe world-class platform PMs that I've had the luck and opportunity to work with. So really taking some of those uh, takeaways, distilling them down and providing it to you so you could take that and apply that to your role as a PM. With that, let's take it away to the first one. Just know your customers. Uh, probably PM 101, and most cliche thing to say in a talk about product management. But in Platform PM, I have a unique perspective of how to think about your customers and talk about your customers. One, there is this uh, first uh, line of customers that you interact with. These are, as a platform, apps developers building on you, or the app teams, or services that depend on you and you work closely with these set of customers. And then you have this second level of customers who are customers who are actually consuming these apps and services or end users who are actually consuming these apps and services. And having a deep appreciation for the problems and challenges of the second level customer uh, really empowers platform PMs, really expands their field of vision to really understand and wallow in the second degree of customer problems and really bringing that back and coming up with unique ideas, coming up with unique problem statements um, is, is often something that I've seen very successful platform PMs do time and again. And it really helps you form a super strong bond with your first line of customers. These are the app teams and the services. You really understand their pain as well and collaborate with them very, very effectively. So going back, know your customers, but also spend time knowing their customers uh, will go a long way and really pay great dividends. Moving on, second one, and this is particularly interesting to platform PMs, is to watch and act on macro trends. This is a tricky one, uh, something that you got to balance, but platform investments, investments in platform infrastructure, uh, are kind of a slow burn. They take a while uh, to pan out, students, especially large scaled out platforms. And I've seen really successful PMs observe for technology changes or trends in technology, trends in user behavior that either create an opportunity for their platform to come in and really uh, be a leader or trailblaze 
or be or get the get the benefits of being a first mover uh, and in many cases also be aware that it might disrupt some of the capabilities provided there by, by their platform and really setting them up to uh, make strategic changes or strategic bets rather than reacting to changes in the macro scale, at the, in the macro scale of things. Uh, a good example of this that I generally provide people and I talk to is today when you log into apps or services, you can use pick your favorite social media or your professional networking IDs and log into these apps and sites. And this is not the case a few years ago. You had to create your profile, go through lengthy signups. Um, you even had extensions that allowed you to do this easily. Just can tell you, it's a user pain that a lot of uh, end users dealt with. And now everyone uses this single one-click sign up, just log in with their existing IDs. It makes life very, very simple and very friction-free for a lot of these apps to acquire users. But going back uh, to adopt this kind of federated authentication, a lot of the platforms would have had to do deep surgery in their security and authentication stacks. And watching this trend and getting ahead of it would have let uh, a lot of platforms really do it on their terms rather than getting forced into doing it because everyone else was doing it around it and reacting to it. This is a kind of macro trend that I always give an example of. Another one would be using Apple Pay or Android Pay uh, on your phone uh, nowadays, which makes payments a simple flip uh, choice as well. So watching for these macro trends, how it impacts your platform, very, very carefully watching if it's going to disrupt your platform, something that platform uh, PMs can do very effectively. The other one is thinking long term. Right? Uh, as PMs, you are constantly bombarded with uh, goals and OKRs and executing on a monthly or quarterly cycle, planning at six monthly or annual cycles. And there's a lot of uh, short-term tactical work getting done, but there's also a need to make sure that you're trading off the short-term goals versus your long-term objectives uh, very, very carefully. And also being very clear about your long-term objectives very, uh, and articulating that with sufficient depth. A thing that I've seen really successful platform PMs do is also lay out the long-term opportunity in the platform space and the platform investments, which gets the product teams and the engineering teams uh, aligned rightly. It helps the creative juices flow flowing. Uh, it makes sure that a lot of your investments, both in the product side and the technical side, is going to accrue towards a lot of your long-term uh, opportunities. Uh, the other thing long-term thinking allows you to do is also weigh the macro trends and how it shapes some of your long-term thinking. Do you need to course correct? Are you headed the right way? Do you need to pivot? Uh, having that view allows you to reflect uh, and control things in a very effective manner. So I think long-term thinking in a platform space uh, is very, very important. Moving on, uh, the next one, and this is a controversial one, is knowing your tech stack. And this doesn't mean you need to know how, we, how to write code or traverse a graph. It's not technical hands-on implementation, but it's having uh, enough uh, depth in the technology stack that you're leveraging or working with. Right? What's the architecture? What are the layers? What are the dependencies? What are the constraints that you're dealing with? Uh, and bonus points over here would be to really understand uh, working with your technology teams, really understanding what are some of the deep assumptions in the platform? What are some of the deep invariants that are baked into the platform that, that are hard to change? And what this does, it actually gives you two advantages. One, uh, it helps you ground your conversation with your engineering peers, a big, big part of your success. Uh, and having an appreciation for some of the constraints and some of the challenges that they're working with will help you have effective trade-off conversations, uh, come up with suggestions um, that help move the ball along rather effectively. And it is really reduce in many cases what I call cycle time. The other thing it does, it actually allows you to zoom out and think about broad new initiatives, new ideas, 
and how um, your platform may require significant surgery to support those things. And what it allows you to do that if you're convicted it's the right thing to go do is understand the risks, understand the dependencies, what all needs to get lined up. Uh, so the teams executing on it are better set up for success. You already know the challenges you're going to run into because you're breaking some deep founded assumption that's been in the platform for years. Uh, gives you an edge rather than finding these things out uh, during execution, which can really hamper progress. So spending time understanding your stack and a good appreciation for how things hang together, uh, I think um, really goes a long way in helping you as a platform peer. The other one is connecting the dots. And I feel this applies for PMs or probably mid to senior, uh, in the mid to senior band, who are progressing through their career or, or also all the way up to head of product where uh, a day-to-day -day PMs are working at breakneck speed, switching context, switching across multiple initiatives. The medium, like I said, the medium and senior band, you've got multiple problem areas, maybe even multiple product lines you're working with, different set of problems. Um, I find uh, very successful PMs that I've interacted with and I've actually spent time asking them this, these questions is, they, have, they regularly pause and kind of level up or imagine they're floating over their uh, problem space and do a left to right view of what's going on. And this allows them to find uh, the patterns that you don't normally see when you are deep in the problem space, but when you zoom out, it gives you the opportunity to uh, look at problems horizontally and come up with innovative solutions or ideas uh, that can end up having a tremendous outsize or a compounding effect leading to tremendous impact. And this is where uh, it might be counterintuitive. But, uh, I've seen people slow down a little regularly. I asked uh, a, a very successful platform PM what he does. And his idea was to regularly block time off on his calendar to slow down and level up and just spend time noodling on the problem space to come up with new ideas. Not all of them take off, but at least it allows him to have this clarity of thought uh, and approach problems uh, in a refreshed way. And many of those nuggets have helped him achieve a lot of success and a lot of impact uh, through, through his career. And the last one, and this one, is a rather simple one, but can have a lot of effect, is publishing a platform roadmap. Right? Most outward-facing, customer-facing uh, features, you generally put it on the roadmap, uh, but I see less of that happening in the platform space. And you can do this in two ways. You can either publish a platform roadmap that's public, everyone gets to see it, or you can just do it personally just for yourself, even, or just at your team level. And what it really does is it forces you to clearly articulate how you're balancing your short-term investments versus your long-term investments, some of the ta tactical work you're doing versus the strategic work that's ongoing, and really have an honest conversation on a regular basis uh, on if are these the right things to do. And having a public roadmap puts that uh, really holds you accountable to do this and show your work outwardly and also just doing it at a personal level just forces you to have that uh, clarity of thought. And I have found it personally very interesting to see some of the investments we are making, how some of the things around me have changed over time, that they may not no longer be relevant or we need to course correct the roadmap a little so that we are headed in the right direction. And bringing in that macro worldview in really allows you to keep the team uh, focused both on the short term and the long term. So if you can, uh, get into a habit of publishing a platform roadmap, even if it's just for your team or for yourself, it'll help a lot in driving clarity. So those were the six takeaways, just summarizing it again. Uh, you don't need to apply all of these to your roles. You can pick and choose, morph them to your, to your uh, situation. But these are some of the things I have found personally very useful. One is know your customers well, know their customers. So really understanding who the end user is and how you can influence that. Watch for macro trends. I generally call it platform investments have a slow burn effect to it. They take a time to land. Uh, if something's gonna disrupt you, watch for it. Or if you can disrupt something again, take the opportunity. 
uh, think long term. A lot of platform investments take uh, pay dividends over time. So think long term and then trade off some of your short term uh, investments along with your long term investments. And it's generally a sign if everything is very short term, it's generally a sign uh, that you're still maturing. But once you start maturing, long term thinking will really help you solidify uh, your investments. Understand your tech stack. Right? Like this is, uh, this is both can be daunting if you're not from a technology background, but spending the time to understanding your technology stack, understanding your engineering team, uh, will really help you cut cycle time. Uh, for mid to senior band PMs, I definitely recommend spending time looking horizontally across your product space, horizontally across the problem space and the industry you're working in or the verticals you're working in to find opportunity to uh, connect the dots and where you could have like one plus one equal to three kind of impact. And then publish a roadmap. Right? We do this normally for customer facing features. I try and do it for platform features as well and capabilities as well. It is force a level of hygiene uh, and honest conversation with your team that are we still doing the right thing? And if any course correction is needed, it's done in a much more controlled manner. With that, thank you for your time today and have a good day.